So, I don't know if you're aware of uh, a product, well, it's an item that's called NFTs. Okay. We're going to take a look at it. It seems to be like a hot monetary item at the moment. You know, they're selling them for $6 million and this and that. Um, You know, one of the things that when I was young, I mean, I always liked the arts. I liked writing. I liked doing music. I liked doing art. And I mean, my perspective is, is that as far as like my art and my music and stuff like that, if you see it on the page, it's kind of eclectic. It's me. Right? And I get, you know, I, I, I let somebody listen to my music today that, uh, replied basically oh I, I, I was like how do you, you like it is it good like, I've never heard anything like that well yeah I wasn't trying to emulate somebody I was trying to express you know a collective of influence and my emotion through music sometimes it's silly sometimes it's serious sometimes it's whatever I wasn't trying to remind you of that classic rock song I wasn't trying to emulate something. I was creating something. And that's kind of the way that I did with my art. You know, I, I was in college and I actually took art in college. And the uh, the teacher there, I don't know if I'd call her a professor or whatever. The teacher was an absolute uh, killjoy. And basically stripped down and demeaned everything that I understood and conceived about art and I'm not trying to say that like expressionism I mean there are artists out there like Michael Whelan who can draw or, or and, and paint which is very difficult with because you're doing it with a brush and, and you're creating strokes and shading and blending colors photographic quality images and I believe that that is like awe awe breathtaking it's just amazing to me because I can draw and I can I can do you know I I would say that my art is not photorealism although I can do some really pretty good realism on certain things but I struggle with a lot of things that certain people do like hands and stuff like that but you know um, I always would find that my best art would, would come when I was kind of doodling, honestly, and kind of not really concentrating and focusing on trying to capture an image, instead just letting it flow and letting the image kind of come forward. And it's almost a little bit of the way that I do my music. You know, I'll start with a concept and I'll lay something down and just add and build it around it. Okay? But whenever I was in art class, we always... We, we had, it was like model type of stuff. You know, they set the models things there and you 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 visualize you, you draw what you see. And I mean, I can do that. Um and as a matter of fact I can take a picture of it. Um and I'm sure I can draw it, but I would I wouldn't say that I'm abstract. you know, my aspirations was to be like a comic book artist. You know, just draw kind of like that kind of style where it was like grounded in some sort of reality but fantasy and extreme like you know contorted poses and stuff like that like you know and and things of that nature Um, like hyper reality and you know I would do the projects and I would draw it out and it would be good I mean pretty much on average I would say and I would do it really quick because my heart wasn't in it. I didn't... It didn't complete anything for me. It didn't... I mean, you're looking at something. You should pretty much be able to assess it and gauge it and replicate it. If you study art or if you practice it. I don't know. I'm going to say that whenever I was a kid, I drew like a child. I practiced drawing quite a bit. And when you practice, you learn tricks. It's just like any other trade. It's just like music. You you're producing stuff. You're laying tracks down, and you 
you figure things out and you're like, well, let me try this and see if this, you experiment, you figure things out, you figure shortcuts out, you connect the dots mentally and, oh, okay. And that's just the way it is in general in life. You know, I, I was, uh, I, I think that I'm pretty fortunate because I'm pretty adept. I mean, I, I use guerrilla tactic styles and uh, making videos and music very much. If you, I probably will. I thought, I, I thought if people really knew how I made my videos and how I do my music, their jaw would hit the floor. A lot of people are like, I want you to get in your studio. Okay, man. Get it out of my pocket, bro. But the main topic is why was she acting? Well, I didn't finish that part. So, so I, w- I would replicate the picture. I would draw it. And I would usually do it kind of at a smaller scale with minimal detail. Um, you know, I would basically get... I guess you would maybe call it interpretive, but it wasn't interpretive. It was... It was the non... It wasn't photo quality, right? It was just the imagery of the, the, the specific scene that was said or model or whatever. But I would finish rather quickly because that at that juncture it seemed to become less about express, expression and conforming and do something that needed to be done in a certain way and that opposed my very feeling and emotion and thought pattern of art and expressionism when you put barriers and boundaries and, and this and that and I mean several musicians Prince was one of them that uh, suffered from these types of, you know, pitfalls, you know, being pigeonholed as a certain type of musician, or we need you to duplicate that type of album so we can have this kind of hit. We need that kind of sound. Again, duplicate the success. Well, yeah, there sometimes is formulas, and, you know, Prince was a genius, and he figured it all out, but there was times when he didn't want to compromise. He didn't want to hear this same crap again. He didn't want to be didn't want to be that character. It wasn't what was in him. He wanted to do him. He wanted to do what he was feeling inside, not what they wanted. And a lot of times if you're artistic, somebody kind of put in that position in opposition to you, it makes you want to rebel. And that's what happened in my situation. She'd be like, come by, she'd be like, oh, you're done. And it was... Because basically my real... My, 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 my better art came out when when I, I did it that way. But I didn't have... I, 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 I let the picture take its form. I would start off with lines, the doodle, and then the doodles became details. So I would do their little project on the, on, on the canvas and uh, I would start another picture on the picture. I would start a complete other picture on the paint, on, on the picture. And I'll never forget it. Uh, I finished it up. And she passed by the one time and she was like, oh wow, that's looking pretty good. And she said, well, it could be a little bit larger, but yeah, that's that's good. And uh, by the time she circled back around again, I had completed this wooden mallard picture. Well, it was a wooden mallard. Uh, and I had already painted it. And it was kind of a small... I already had the idea that that's what I was going to do. Because I was going to... That's another thing that, that people that feel spited or, or suffocated... They're going to try to push through and let you see what is possible. And that that's where my standpoint was. I, I, I did it kind of small. She came through and was like, oh, that's kind of small. Didn't want to say anything. But I was thinking, yeah, because wait till you see what I fill that empty space with. And uh, I guess she thought I was going to do the drapes or something. But no, I did the duck. She thought it was good. Wasn't big enough. But by the time she had come around, the next time, I had completed a pan, which is a mythological creature that is half goat, half man, playing a lyre, which is a flute, leaning against a log. And it was beautiful. I mean, it was... It was art. It was, I mean, 
I was proud of it. And everybody around me was like, hey, dude. She comes back around. She goes, I can't. What, what is that? I was like, ah, I, I was done. And I started another project on here. It didn't really take too well with her because that wasn't the assignment. I turned it in and I got, I think it was a really low grade. I mean, I, I know it was like 70s or lower. And I was baffled. I was like, damn, I should have got extra credit at least. But it wasn't the fact of the quality or the conception of the art. It was more about the confinement and following the construct. And at that initial prod, I instantly had a dislike for what would be considered contemporary art. And I began to look around and people were getting better scores. And I, I, I mean, you know, I could have been looking at it because I was younger. It could have been, you know, a little bit of ego in the way of it or, or you know, just being like, well, how do they get a higher grade? And I, I, I don't fuck around with stupid shit. I ask a question if I if I have it, especially to somebody who I'm paying money to, or somebody that's supposed to teach me. I'd like to know the, the boundaries and the parameters of it. Uh, how does that person? How did how did they get that? And I did I did two pictures. Well, they did a larger scale, and it was the subject material that that the assignment was on. Okay fucked up. You know that, right? I didn't tell her that, but I've had some serious uh, um, contrast in thoughts with some of my teachers. Three of them. And they did not fare very well against me because uh, they thought they were going to teach me by teaching me a lesson and not actually educating me at all. And that was a fallacy. Because whenever I was in, uh, and two of them in one year retired, <laughs> one of my teachers in the 10th grade, uh, actually, at the end of the school year, called my parents. And just, this is what my parents related to me. He called them and said that it was my fault that he has had a change in heart of teaching and that it was my fault that he is deciding to retire. And uh, my response was, well, the next the next year, you should send me a thank you note because I would call him out and I would, I, I would tell him. And I, and I've seen it in a couple of videos where, where, where people will do this, but If you're not gaining or benefiting from being in a classroom, there is no point in it. That's like watching an educational video and watching a static screen trying to get an education. You're not going to do it. Uh, This guy was, uh, could not relate the material in a way that I could understand it because he was not an adaptable person. He might have had the, the XYZs of it, but he didn't have the heart or the connection, or a way to connect to people. Anytime that I've ever trained anybody, or I had a student, that's the first thing that has to take place. You have to find out how you can translate the data into a person. This is way off topic, but obviously it's important because I'm telling you, not necessarily a fact, but this is a fact. When you are trying to influence somebody's understanding right you have to know how to reach them like if they don't like the sight of spiders or whatever it is they have a phobia of it that's probably not the best model choice to use in translating it because their phobia is automatically going to put up a defensive psychological barrier barrier and put a wall between the data and their phobia, right? Like you're not going to teach a math class on the top of a building, hanging off by a, scaf- a scaffold, 
and expect that person to want to pay attention or to even be interested in it. They're going to be thinking of something else because they don't like that format. And a lot of uh, teachers and educators and just people in general are suffering from this even today. Even politics and just society in general because we've all been just juxtaposed, a lot of us. Uh, and we the, the, the communication barrier isn't there. And a lot of people are just like, well, that's just how I feel. And what you feel doesn't matter. Cool. And in a normal situation, that is true. But if you're relying on if you're paying somebody, if you're getting paid, if there's transactions that you know are required on a daily basis or you know interactions, you need to learn how to say, look, you know, this is a problem for me. And it, it got to that point with several of my teachers. I, I mean, I told the guy that uh, blamed his retirement on me. I was like, I was like, you go to the board, you write these numbers down, and you talk. And I don't understand the words that you're talking about. I don't understand it. I don't know how to help you figure out how to relate that to me. I don't know how to do that for you. Because you, I mean, I told, like I said, I I tell it how it is. I was like, you're up there, monotone, you're boring the shit out of, I didn't say boring the shit out of me. But I did tell one teacher to suck my dick because, hey, call it like it is. I got suspended for that shit though. Too revealing, too much over rent. But if you are an educator, be passionate about it. Learn how to reach your students. Because when you reach your students, you can teach your students. Damn, you can write that one down and send that off to ISDs everywhere. Anyway, back to the lecture at hand. So, I turned it in and you know, I got a failing grade, and I looked at her, and I asked her, I was like, you know, she was like, okay, well, this is, this, it's not, it didn't do the parameters, well, guess what, this is college, I paid for this shit, I'm gonna do it how I fucking want then, if you're not, if you're gonna be an asshole, and, 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 you know, be that way, because I'm able to do it, and, I, I'm not saying that my art is fucking amazing or breathtaking and, or, or, you know, anything like that. But, I mean, it's, if I set my mind to it, I'd come up with some pretty interesting things. But, well, we, we got way off subject. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. I might edit that shit out, but it's really good shit, what I said. It is true. So, you got NFTs. We're going to look at the, uh, the basis of it, the meaning of it, and, and, the, and the most important question of all. Because this has happened from the beginning and the ending. Well, the beginning. And and these things are selling for millions of dollars. You know what they are, right? They're basically GIFs, right? They're encrypted GIFs, GIFs, however you want to say it. Animated files, right? Digital art, right? Now, you can make that with Vista Pro. You can do it with the program and encrypt it. It's, much, it's very similar to uh, Bitcoin. And I, I came across a very Im- real important information about going green that I was unaware of that I'd like to bring out to the open. It's really interesting. We'll get into that later or maybe in a whole other video. <laughs> but, so these little icon videos, I mean, they're, I mean they're, that's what they look like. You know, you look at the pictures, it's just digital art. But it's encrypted with a number which signifies if it's number one, that means that you're the first owner of it. It's valid. It's validated. This is part of like the NBA is using this to sell them. So you, I mean, and I get that, you know, in like video games, they have like pay to play. They have outfits you can buy and it's interactive. I mean, you really got to think about it. You know, it kind of you got to dumb it down a little bit because when you when you're playing a video game, number one, you're paying a, a price for to entertain yourself. And if you want that specific uni, uh, uniform, then you, then you have to pay for it. That's the option. Then, then pay for it. But it does have a tendency to get a little bit abusive out there with that type of material. EA is very known is known for doing that. If you know uh, video game companies, that they're they're notorious. Ubisoft. 
it's off. <clears throat> but, you know, I want to stress that within these, the separation of what the basis of video games are and what this NFT is. The NFT is an image. A video game is an experience that you interact with. And it is true that both of these are digital. So at the end of the day, it's it's really nothing. You've accomplished nothing. You've done nothing. It's an experience. It's a feeling. It's something. And, and that's what I, I say that art is and music is. It, it's there to put an emotion out and draw an emotion out from you, from the viewer, or to translate or transfer uh, a feeling or an emotion that's taking place you, that you're trying to reach and tap into. That's what it is. That's what I've always conceived art to be. And that's my unfiltered, untaught uh, opinion of, on the matter. And I, and I think that it's that way with movies and stuff like this. And the one thing that's weird about art is that it is... Uh, I don't know exactly the word that I... It's, it slips my mind, but... I could have watched or seen something as a younger person and then at my age now see it and have a totally different feeling about it because I've had an experience happen that uh, I can associate with it and I can understand it better and it, you know, it, com- it communicates to me. You know, there's several songs like that. I mean, I remember like hearing songs on the radio when I was a kid. I was like, this song is dumb. And then hearing it you know, five years later, just be like, dude, this really is actually, it's pretty good, <laughs> you know, and then there's songs that you hate at first, and then you hear it on the radio over and over and over, which is kind of like programming, and then you're like, ah, oh, it's kind of catchy, I like this, and then you're singing it, that's, so, uh, what makes art in, in this in the Bitcoin and all of this stuff in, in the NFTs, what is the value? Uh, what, 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 what is the value based on? Well, certain things are. I'm going to be real with you, and, 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 and this is what is conceptually my opinion. And we'll take a look at you know what, what certain websites say because I haven't looked it up yet. But I, and I'm almost where I need to be, so I'm going to cut this list right quick, and then we'll look at it here in a minute. My conception is, is does it convey an emotion, right? Now, this started off in oil paints and drawings and and things of that nature, even whenever it was like limited press. Now, that's going to be supply and demand. Supply and demand is one of the biggest factors ever, right? If you have an original Da Vinci, well, Da Vinci's not around. He's not going to be able to reproduce it. It can be replicated, of course, but it is not the authentic original piece that was touched by a brush by that by that person and you know like Picasso how much is the Picasso worth how much would you pay for a Picasso I don't know that the lineage doesn't connect to me the the imagery doesn't connect to me um, when I look at something that's really abstract I don't I in all honesty my first thought is I could have shit better than that and there's several things like where people just splatter paint on it. And yes, objectively, it is art. And yes, you might be able to get some kind of a, you know, it's just like stereotypical. Like you have these hob, like these snobby type people, like, oh, that's just lovely. It's just, oh, the way that the, look at, look at the way that that's, that's spread out. It's just, it's just fantastic. It's just, and, and, and they're entertained with that. To me, I think that's false. I mean, that's my opinion. I could be wrong, but when I look at it, I see, I see a uh, paper towel commercial. <laughs> Just say it, bro. And then I conceptualize and say, dude, I could do that and put a spin on it, and it would look even better. But here's the deal: certain people can do that and sell that splatter, or uh, I'm, I'm serious. 
look up abstract art and then look at price tags and ask yourself, could you possibly do that? Could you do it? There are people that are consistently piece, moving pieces for millions of dollars for a canvas with some paint sprinkled on it. I'm, I shit you not, I'll put some pictures here. What is, what is it that makes this magical or so sought after? I mean, this guy? It, 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 I mean, you, you put that out and let somebody see it? It, 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 it? I mean, it looks like Taco Bell art. Actually, I've seen really badass art in Taco Bell with like desert scenes. To me, value gets, gets in there when you can get detail in the realism or the emotion. You know, like, uh, oh, who was that uh, artist that was uh, Dolly? Dolly, yes. I mean, the the he was a very quality artist, but a lot of his stuff was just like so abstract and, and like image within images. I love that the illusions, the optical illusion of it all. I love that um, because you're capable of completing an image within an image. And I, I love it. It, it. it brought me back to like whenever I was in class. So I think that holds a higher value because to me, I like that more. And maybe there are just this huge, huge, I'm talking about great populace that love these sprinkle paintings. And that's why the demand is there. But I don't think that at all. I see more of uh, bagels on walls then I have splatter paintings war halls on walls I kind of rhymes so what what objectively gives it its value and and I was you know looking at going into this art world and art business and I realized something that I would do art and it would it would be good but it was just like doors were closed and it's just like this with musicians if you know a lot of people and you, or if you know a musician or if you can google you know these people that are uh, uh, people that are on uh, music you know crazy good videos of musicians doing something and you look at something they're doing something completely original or something like amazing very few people will fall into a category you know, it's like uh, the voice and all that stuff. There's there's a couple people that slide through there, but think of all the people that are really good that don't really make it, right? You understand what I'm, I'm getting to? Then you hear some of the shit on the radio, and it's like, okay, I, I hate this song, and it's one of the ones that don't get cowed on your brain. I mean, I could, I could come up with a, a million songs. But one Hit Wonder. Look up One Hit Wonder. Maybe they have one good song. And they've made tons of money off of it. But, I mean, you know that there are bad songs out there that are just trash. That are just... I mean, there, there's, there's no way that... I don't know how. I mean, maybe it's bribery. Maybe it's payoffs. Maybe it's something like that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but... You, you have to understand there's people out there making huge amounts of money on garbage or, or, or something to me that, in my opinion, doesn't deem that value. Where there's other things that are really talented that are overlooked. And I'm not trying to put myself in a category. I'm doing me. I mean, I don't give a damn. I mean, if you like it, you like it. That's great. I don't have a whole bunch of subscribers. Do I think that my, my uh, data, do I think that what I talk about uh, sucks? Do I think my music sucks? No. Do I think it's the best? No. I, I do it for me. I do it be, for, for my kids. I do it for somebody who might see it down the road and it might help them. That's all I, I'm doing. But, it, but, but also, I got this way because uh, I've seen this uh, format and, and this formula laid out before me. I saw that uh, talent didn't register as far as, you know, money. You know, 
I would slap some paintings together, you know, and, you know, uh, we, 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 we wouldn't be interested in that, you know, for consignment. We wouldn't be interested to hang that. Oh, we'd give you a hundred dollars for it. Huh? Why is this, uh, ketchup stain worth more than my ketchup stain? So, there's a lot of theories, and, and I want you to be careful with this NFT shit, because it, it's really all it is. It's a conceptualization. And it's, it's like this year's um, baseball cards. You, know, you have, like, comic books and, and, and uh, like, baseball cards. They would put a value on it at the time. Now... You're gonna, you're gonna be like, well, you know, you can you can catch a card, and you there's there's baseball cards that are worth millions. That is on the basis of supply and demand. There was X amount made, and people bought them, and most of the times they were kids, and they got trashed, which brought the number of available units down. And whenever like Marvel when comics started becoming more popular the value of them went up and there was a fluctuation and they gauged it by that. Art is not that way. Unless you're doing print runs. And the NFTs are are supposed to be like that where you can originate which number out of a series it is. Like if they say limited edition, I mean, they do that to hype it up. Okay? Or if they do like a a a PlayStation console that's limited edition console or that it can become valuable. And yeah, there might only be five in, in, NFT or whatever. But you have to be objective here. And, and think to yourself, what is the basis and formula to pricing and having value to these things? Because you know that one of them from the next one is not going to be variable to the to the art that's on it or the skill that it takes to well I shouldn't say that because there are are differences in skill but if you have several different artists like you have a classroom of them and they all draw something abstract right you put it in the gallery right how do they figure out this guy's got it I always just thought that was the most fallible way to do it it didn't make sense to me are they, are they spinning a bottle? Are they playing favorites? Or well, this guy's got a sad story? And, you know, because certain... It's all connected. It's a laundering thing, really, if you ask me. I mean, why would you give $6 million to a painting that was done yesterday, right? With the base of materials that it took to make it cost, we'll say it cost... $57. And the artist spent visually looking at it and, and watching the tape on how they did it. It was made in 10 minutes. How does this fool make $6 million on a painting like that? There's no invested time into it. It didn't really even look like the effort was made. It was just foo, 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 foo. I seen artists make a picture out of Jesus and it was like Backwards, it was weird. It was like drawing. Uh, I'm gonna, I might try to find it, but it was just. Oh, he did it upside down. That's what it was. And like you were like, what in the hell is this dude drawing? And then he spins it around. And it's like, whoa, dude. And it was realistic looking, totally realistic. And you had no idea what was taking place until it was completed. It was. It was amazing. But there is a theory that art is a psyop. It's a way to, to launder money. You know. Upon hearing that that theory, there is some levity to it, because there is not a distinct formula to what makes a successful artist or painter or somebody you know like it, because it's just like music, you know. I mean, you have to get really lucky or you know pay to uh, you know boost your your share or whatever. You got to kind of pay to play a little bit. Or I know some secret secret ways to do it like bribery and stuff like that or whatever. I mean, that's that's like blackmail to me. I mean, I don't agree with that. That's not a tactic. I want 
to express myself and people to enjoy it. And if they do, just... See, in, in the society that we're in at this current time, nobody likes to extend hands. I saw, I saw a wonderful video with Richard Pryor in it, and uh, he was saying, you know, in comparison to Eddie Murphy, because his comedy was his art, and that was his, you know, this is, that was what his calling was, and he was good at it. That, uh, you know, he Dick Cavett asked him, it was a Dick Cavett interview, if you want to look it up, but Dick Cavett asked him, you know, so when you're watching like Eddie Murphy, do you think, man, this cat's got it easy, he's got it made. And he said, oh yeah, he's got, he's got it easy. I was, I was in a different time and it was a whole different environment. You know, it's racially, you know, talking about you know, the circumstances of that. And uh, he says, uh, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, because, you know, blacks weren't common inter- entertainers in his time. So he was breaking down doors and, and not nudging doors and, you know, acclimating you know, the unknown to people that were afraid or, or had this racism in them. Okay? And this is, I'll probably make a video about it because I wanted to, was about how this interview expels and how to, how, tells you how to expel racism just easily. And, and I'll, I'll just tell you right now. So he goes, Yeah, yeah, I made it, you know, it was easy. And, and, um, Dick Cavett asked, he was like, basically, yeah, it's a different time and everything like that. And uh, he said, uh, how do you think that he was able to do that? And he said, because of me. I was the, I was the one that he's following because I opened up that door for him. And Dick Ca- uh, Cavett was like, oh, well, then who did that? Who? So you're the one that started it all. And, or, or did somebody do that for you? And he looked right at him. And people know where they get an inspiration from or, or an idea or a conceptuation to follow or to try to achieve a certain goal by doing something. You know, whether it be follow artistry or draw, whatever it is. He looked dead right at him. Like, like if you ask me who, who inspires me, I will say Prince. I don't care what you think. Um, and there's somebody that does that for everybody who's really inspired. Well, I mean, even, even religiously, it could be a figure, uh, it could be non-materialist it could be like fictional character oh I really like Jesus oh I really dig the, the persona that, that the, the Neo had I, you know that really inspires me to be something like you know you get your inspirations from different places and you should be able to instantly recall it basketball oh Michael Jordan you know he uh, without hesitation he said Dick Gregory you know he was uh yeah, Dick Gregory is awesome. You need to look him up, dude. He's he's awesome, awesome, awesome. He might he's gonna tell you a lot of stuff you ain't gonna like. He's gonna tell you stuff that you might not agree with, but it's definitely worth listening to. I don't agree with everything he says, but I find it to be very thought provoking material. And uh, if you have a sit down with uh, and, and watch some of the Richard Pryor interviews where he's you know, just laying it out there like it is, and he's not, like, jacked up on cocaine, it's very uh, intellectual. He's not a stupid person. But anyhow, we're going to cut this one here, and we're going to get into it. I I just kind of went off in a bunch of different ways, but we're going to investigate, you know, where the conceptualization of value comes from. And are people exploiting it, or is it all kind of kept in-house because of societies? right? And I would kind of almost venture to say that maybe it is because rich stay rich and very, there's very few crossover points, you know, like, you know, you hear about, let me think about the the close, the the most recent one. Um, Drake is related to somebody in the business, I, 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 mm, I almost want to say it's Sly or something like somebody like that, like uh, somebody like that was the, the last generation that was like real musicians and stuff. Drake was 
that was his nephew or his Drake's nephew is the nephew of somebody very famous. And, you know, you have people like, here's a good example. Lil Bow Wow, right? He's a chart topper, right? He's topping the charts all the time, busting out great hit after great hit, right? Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video for right now. And uh, by the way, but Lil Bow Wow is related to Snoop Dogg. Which, and if you look at certain aspects of the music business, business um, promoters, agents, people that control that type of industry are looking for certain types of music to get certain reactions. And, I, and this has been told by many, 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 many artists. You know, they won't get signed unless they can stick to a format. Why do you think that certain formats are stuck to? And very few people are, you know, originators. They'll just pick up something, talk about money, bitches, and hoes, and go make some crap. You know, you get people like Roots, you know, that are like real musicians and flow. And I mean, they, they talk about things that, you know, they have certain points of it, but it's, it's more realistic as far as like emotion. It's not just saying something obscene just to say, I fucked a bitch upside down her head. I will slap the hoe and I'll just, you know what I'm saying? Now the roots, and, and it's funny because a lot of, like for me and a lot of people that are into the music culture will take these gems and they'll isolate them. Like, hey, you ain't gonna get that one and taint that shit up. And we've seen musicians fall left and right to stupid pop songs and stuff like that, but at the core base, Jewel, <coughs> anybody remember her? Uh, but I mean, you know, that, Anyway, we're not going to get out into the whole sellout thing, but I will say that it seems that the uh, the chart success and the, uh, all this other stuff is either you know handed to those that are within a system, or those that are following the people, the guidelines of the people that are in the system. Deuces.